Hey everyone, welcome to the next video in the five minutes or less series. This is going to be on the scientific method. So here we go. First things first, this is going to be how an experiment is conducted. So here's the general list of how it goes. There's a problem statement, a hypothesis, then you got your materials, you got your experiment and your procedure, and then followed by your data collection and conclusion. So the problem statement is going to be always the question asked in the beginning of the experiment. What are you trying to figure out? An example could be, uh, would someone get more thirsty after exercising? Is Fortnite easier to play with the mouse and keyboard? Anything that you're trying to figure out in an experiment, this is where you're going to start and ask that question. Then you're going to make a hypothesis. This is going to be what you think may happen in that experiment up here. It's just a guess. So normally you write it as an if then because statement, which you could see I wrote down below an example. If someone exercises, then they will become more thirsty because exercising makes you dehydrated. So it's if they do something, then what do you think will happen because whatever your reason would be. Your materials, you're going to gather anything you might need to conduct the experiment. For the actual experiment, you want a great procedure that is very specific so that anyone's going to be able to repeat it because most science needs to be repeated to make sure that the results keep coming in over and over again the same way. Then as you do your experiment, you're going to collect all your data. It could be uh, graphing involved in this or just data collection. And then you're going to write a conclusion about what ended up happening in your experiment. You're also going to add whether or not your hypothesis is right or wrong. Now, if we have certain experiments called a controlled experiment, these experiments are ran a little bit differently. There's two groups. One is going to be an experimental group and the other is going to be a control group or the regular scenario. If you're testing this fertilizer, you want to make sure that you have two sets of experiments going. The first one is going to use the fertilizer and the second one isn't. So what's the difference between these two? Only the fertilizer. Everything else in the experiment has to stay constant. That means the soil has to be the same, the plant has to be the same, the amount of sun, the amount of water, the people doing the experiment, because you don't want any other variables besides the one that you're testing. The independent variable, this is the part of the experiment that you're changing. You can remember this by a capital I looking like independent. If you draw an I, you could put there the little arrows and that means that the independent variable will always be on the x-axis on the bottom. The dependent variable is what you're going to be measuring in the experiment. So that's going to go on the y-axis and the way I remember this is lowercase d with the little arrow on top so you can remember that the dependent goes on the y because it's up and down. Constants, these are things within the experiment that never change. So we were talking about this before. If this was the problem statement, does the amount of light affect plant growth? The only thing you are changing is the amount of light. So that's going to be the independent variable. The plant growth here is going to be the dependent variable because that's what you're measuring. Constants are anything that's going to stay the same in those two experiments. You're always going to use the same type of plant. You're going to keep it in the same location. You can use the same type of soil. You can water it the same amount. The same person doing the experiment. Everything has to be the same except the one thing that you're trying to measure, which is going to be the amount of light. So really the only thing that should not stay constant is the amount of light. Uh, one more example for the road. Let's do this one here. Does storing popcorn in the refrigerator make it pop better? So the storing of the popcorn is going to be the independent variable because we're storing it in the fridge and we're not storing it in the fridge. Those are our two different experiments. Then we're going to measure if it's going to pop better. So that's the dependent variable. Some constants in here. We could say the type of popcorn. We could say the amount of time in the refrigerator. We could say time in the microwave. So really the list can go on forever. The only thing you can't write for the constant is putting it in the refrigerator because that's the one thing we're testing. All right, that is scientific method in a nutshell. I hope this video was helpful to you and stay tuned for more five minutes or less science tutorial review videos. All right, have a good day.